Hi, welcome. This is Outer in Class Break TC Sources Notes from the Field. My name is Bartosz Bilavski, and I would like to introduce to the subject how to cr how you, how would you create TSC resources using PowerShell classes. The conference this year is different than what we had in the past. Therefore, I won't be able to uh, receive the questions from you right away. Uh, but if you feel like you have one, feel free to contact me on the Twitter. Agenda for today. First, we, I will try to explain why why I think I'm the right person to explain this subject, why would you create DC resources in the first place, and also why would you create it with the classes. Once we are uh, have this out of the window, we'll see how uh, the classes in PowerShell are structured, classes themselves, then we will look into how to use classes to define DSC resources, and Last but certainly not least, we will look into some ideas and problems, so actual notes from the field that I promised in the subject. And last but not least, at the final step, we will try to test those DSC resources to see how they actually behave. Um, those that of you that attended my sessions in the past know that I'm not really a PowerPoint person, so that's enough for the PowerPoint for now. Let's move to the PowerShell console. PowerPoint and uh, let's look at the agenda. More detailed agenda than the one I showed you in the PowerPoint slide. So first of all, as I mentioned, I would like to explain why I can actually provide you with the notes from the field. So I work in a company Optiva in Netherlands and we've been using DSC for almost five years now and most of this time we were using DSC resources that we written ourselves uh, using DSC classes. Um, the reason uh, for that will come later so during this time we created around 25 uh, modules containing DSC resources. Within those 25 modules we have around 75 different class based resources and I checked the git commit history uh, in our repo and according to this we were been working on it since December 2015. So almost five years now. Um, so that gives you an idea why I think I'm the right person to explain uh, the DSC class based resources. Uh, you may ask yourself a question, okay, you have all those resources, where they are? Well, we would love to publish them someday. At the moment, we didn't have a strict policy for that one in our company, so therefore we couldn't do that yet, but we are really trying to get that out of the window. Why? So why would you create DSC resource? First of all, you may happen uh, you may find so yourself in a situation where uh, certain uh, areas of technology are not DSC described. You want to install some service, you want to install some third party software, you want to configure it, uh, and nobody uh, really needed that in the past and never, never thought about describing those things in DSC, therefore the resource doesn't exist yet. Another situation that you may face is when you have older operating systems. This is something that we face for most of the, the majority of the time that we are using these resources in our organization because it's only like two months ago that we removed the last 2008 R2 box from our network. That meant that for some things that were described in the publicly uh, available these resources, we could not use those because they were relying strictly on the commandlets or uh, you know, SIM commandlets that were um, delivered with 2012 and above. Therefore, we had to find a way around it. And last, uh, lastly, we find ourselves very often in a situation where there are public resources exist, but it either doesn't really cover the scenarios that we were trying to address, or it was uh, missing some very viable for us, uh, very parameters very viable for us. In all those situations, we may have had to figure out a way 
and uh, sometimes uh, we choose an option to uh, fix the resources in the public resources it would the changes were not drastic and uh, they made sense it was uh, possible to describe them in this context but sometimes when we found ourselves redrifting up far far from what the community decided on we decided ourselves that we will create these resources strictly for our organization now um, that's the reason why would you create DC sources? Why would you not do that? Well, if something that you already you something already exists for the technology that you're working with, it's properly described, it matches your requirements. It's best if you just try to use community resources first and uh, build in resources obviously as well. And if those work fine for you, there's really no reason to invest time into uh, own DSU sources unless it's just for you as an exercise to get familiar with it and be able to have this knowledge when you actually need to or have to create DSU resources yourself. Um, now why did we choose class-based DSU sources? So um, the main reason was that we moved to WMF5 PowerShell 5 quite quickly after it shipped and with that we had all our nodes the one that we wanted to control with DC running PowerShell 5 though so there was nothing nothing stopping us from using this uh, new method of creating DSU sources using PowerShell classes um, it, what we liked about it because it's only like that was something that didn't stop us from, from going in that direction but what uh, made us decide in the going in that direction. Well, uh, the main reason we decided to go in that direction was that first of all, the DSU resources based on the classes are very explicit in their nature. So, and DSU resources, uh, MOV-based DSU resources, first you create a MOV, then you describe, uh, then you describe the um, actual thing that will perform the action, and only then you can deliver it. And if you want to change it, you very often have to go back to the beginning and start over with creating or updating mob, which is usually not that easy. In class-based DSU sources, things change. First of all, uh, you have to explicitly specify what resources you have, but also the whole mob is not needed anymore. And um, that also means that your code is being validated while you alter it. So there, is no ri there are no risks that you start altering your DSU resource and at a certain point you find yourself uh, the resource that doesn't work and with the only reason for that being that your DSU resource was just um, not uh, missing some key property or it was not uh, um, altered with the whole mob requirements in mind. When you alter it with the classes, you get the feedback right away. So when you make a mistake, you will see it right away. Okay, enough about the theoretical background. Now we know why we would we would do that. So let's see how we would actually do that. Um, to start off, we will just look at the classes as a concept in the C, uh, sorry, in PowerShell. Um, so classes were introduced in PowerShell 5 and they were introduced for the DSC purpose mainly. There were some other situations where you would use it but um, because it were, they were designed to be a kind of a way to alter DSC resources a lot of things didn't manage to get through a lot of elements of the usual classes that uh, C Sharp developers are familiar with never really uh, came to uh, existence into uh, PowerShell classes. That may change in the future, but for now we just have this very basic implementation of classes. Uh, with that we have two types of classes. First of all we have enums which are very useful in the context of DSC because those uh, type of classes allow you to specify the list of the properties that you are, ab uh, you are willing to accept. So it uh, actually gives you an easy way to specify for example class like insure or uh, some states of the given uh, system that you want to ap approve users to for users to use and you don't have to worry about them 
using a different volume for that. So if you have this uh, the enum like that, then you generally just have a properties that are static uh, properties from this class that you can later use, and those obviously have some numeric numerical value to it. So this is the first type. The second type, the usual PowerShell classes, full-blown classes. Uh, these have three potential elements. So first of all, you can define properties in the SC resource uh, the, uh, in the PowerShell classes. Um, for example, and the, the may the way to do that is that you define the type of your property, and then with the variable notation you specify the name. So the name of actual property in this case will be bar. Next to the properties, you can define the methods. And the syntax is similar, so you also have to specify the type that you will return. If you don't want to return anything, you would specify the void here. Then you specify the name of your method. And in the brackets, you would specify the parameters for it. And what's very important for the classes uh, in general is that if you say that you're returning a string, you really have to return a string and you have to use keyword return because that's the only way to return anything from DSC uh, from the class uh, methods. Um, final element of the class is constructors. Um, in the DSC scope they are not that useful but in general you have to remember that you can create your own constructors for your class and those usually come in the shape of the name of the method that doesn't have any return time because it will return the type that you are defining so it's the same as the name of the class itself you can take uh, as many parameters as you want and then you should just return you can set the, the properties of the your current object and whatever you do there will stick so you don't even have to return from it it will return itself and basically this is a way to create the constructors that take some parameters and change the uh, uh, the, the instance of the class that's being created but you have to remember if you create any uh, any constructor on your own you will have to default def define default um, default constructor that takes no parameters if you don't define any parameter at all you will get it for free the moment you define your first constructor you have to add this um, parameterless constructor explicitly okay so we have this basic uh, shape of your class let's just run this code very quickly just to see how it looks so as you can see here I have my class defined and now I will try to uh, create instance of this class. So um, if you look here, I created this constructor that takes simple uh, simple string and will set it to uh, property bar. So if I run the constructor like this, I indeed get the, uh, the instance of my type foo, which has property bar set to something as intended. Next to that, I can always create the instance um, if I cre created this uh, parameterless uh, constructor I can create instance without providing any parameters then set uh, one of the properties to whatever I want it to be and then I can run the method on it and gets this get the value of the bar because as you probably remember the show bar actually returns the value of bar so as you can see here I indeed got uh, the value that I configured the bar to be uh, and last but not least, if we have this parameterless constructor, what we can do is to cast hash table into the uh, inst into the class, and by doing that, we can immediately set value to the properties that we specify. Um, so this is basics about uh, the uh, PowerShell classes. Next to that, we have to remember that um, PowerShell classes maybe don't have all the features that classes normally have. One thing they def definitely have implemented is inheritance. So you can inherit from different PowerShell classes. So if I inherit from class uh, foo, um, and based on that I create a class bar, if I create instance of this class, it will already have all the 
properties of the foo. So even though I didn't define anything inside of the definition of the class bar, it already has all the properties that foo had. Uh, but you don't have to inherit from the classes that you defined yourself. You can also inherit from the classes that already exist in .NET. So here I'm trying to create a class that will inherit from system.net.webclient, which gives me all the features that system.net.webclient would normally have. And what I define here additionally is this method save to temp, which allows me to save any page to temp file and will return the path to this temp file. So let's define our class and then we will create instance of it. We will download the google.com and we will look at the content of it. So if I run this code, as you can see here, I got some um, HTML code and by the, the look of it, it's really the last line in my uh, HTML file that I downloaded from the google.com because as you can see we have closing tags here uh, closing body closing HTML so what you would normally have in properly formatted HTML so this is the classes 101 we are now we know what the classes are so let's look into the DSC resources as I mentioned before the moment you start creating DSC resources, you will get immediate fee feedback about the things that you did wrong. So the way to change actual class into DSC resource is by adding the attribute DSC resource. No surprises there so far. The moment you do that fall, um, you are not gonna get away with just having the empty class as I have here. As you can see, PowerShell immediately informs me that my res resource doesn't have a set, it doesn't have get, it doesn't have test, and it doesn't have a key property. All those things have to be there in order to for the class to be proper. So using inheritance, now I'm inheriting from this resource that was completely broken, and I'm adding the methods to it. Uh, and get test and set are three methods that you have to have um, the, those three methods actually uh, map if you ever authored uh, DSC resources using the MOF format you they will map uh, one to one to get target resource set target resource and test target resource um, so get will is expected to return the type you are defining so as you can see this class is named define methods therefore this is exactly the type I have to return from get um, uh, but as you can see here also because the class didn't have any constructor that is not parameterless I get this parameterless constructor for free so if I just return hash table PowerShell uh, will be able to cast that into defined methods uh, type and that's perfectly fine for classes in the uh, in PowerShell. Next to that we have our test method which obviously has to return boolean and uh, as I stated before you have to be explicit about it in PowerShell uh, classes so here you have to say return and you have to return the value of the test because this is just a, a um, kind of skeleton it's not really proper implementation of DSC class I just return false every time and uh, set as you would expect is not returning anything because that's not what set will normally do set will normally change your system and is not expected to return anything that's why it's configured to be void and return is obviously not mm, required and also actually it will be flagged as a problem so if i try to return anything from here uh, it will immediately tell me um, that the void method should not return anything at all. So let's just delete that line because it's not really what you should do from set. Okay, but still uh, the PowerShell is not happy with me and now is just ha not happy about one thing where previously it was just listing four things. So this time around it will tell me that I miss key property on my DSC resource. 
So what should I do? Well, obviously I will add it now and um, I will add a few other properties. But as you can see, using inheritance, now I just have to add those missing bits in order to get it going. So um, I defined a key property and this is mapping to actual key in the MOV documents uh, when you when you were altering the DSC resources using MOVs. Um, next to that we have DSC property that's mandatory which would map to required properties in the MOV. Um, we have also non, not configurable properties which are in turn those things that you can read from the system but you cannot reset. So for example if you have a file that you configure you can read uh, some MD5 checksum of it but obviously it's not something you would normally be able to set yourself and uh, finally we have write methods which are just uh, DSC property without any uh, um, any parameter any argument which means that they basically you can set the value to them but you don't have to it's up to you to decide so this is basically the structure of the PowerShell DSC resource when it comes to PSM1 file one thing I would like to mention I mentioned that it's a bit more simpler than what you had we had in the past so let's take a look at uh, my tree view right here show tree to make it slightly smarter and maybe let's also show leaves so now we can see that I have this MOV DSC resource and the structure there was pretty convoluted so you always had to create this manifest that you would that you would define uh, metadata about your DSC resource and, and then next to it you would create the folder DSC resources and inside of this folder you would be putting those subfolders um, with resources which are very implicit there's nothing that will tell system okay this is DSC resource I have it would have to parse it basically in order to find those resources inside of it um, it also means that you had this really nested structure there with a lot of files that you had to maintain and you had to make sure that the schema MOV is actually uh, compliant with the PSM1 file those things were separate so metadata and actual code that does things were separate uh, that changes with DSC resources using the classes because there you are down to two files and um, we have our PSM1 file and we which where def we define actual code and we have PSD1 file so let's take a look how those two files may look like if we actually want to define our DSC resource. Live demos, even in recorded uh, fashion, I will try to make sure that it's as they are as live as possible. I will try not to fix too many things so it feels like you are actually attending power, proper PowerShell conference and watching somebody making a lot of mistakes and typos. So bear with me. Uh, manifest, as you can see here, I just have to specify root module where I have all the classes defined. As usual, module version, GUI, outer, some company, if you have one, comp copyrights, and then what I mentioned before you would explicitly define DSC resources that you want to export it's kinda important and, and kinda useful because then you can be really explicit what you want to export which classes actually should be treated as DSC resources you want to show to outside world um, doesn't ma really make sense to, to have something missing here but it's at least make sure that you are have this conscious decision okay I want to expose this resource to the outside world and PSM1 file this is um, hardly uh, production ready code uh, normally we would probably have a lot of try catches here and um, ob obviously we would have code that does something useful but we already have um, the class that is marked as DSC resource as you can see at the top and we have the name for this class we have a key property 
we don't have any other property so that already makes this DSC resource useless because yeah uh, key property is the way to figure out what you want to change but if you don't have a way to specify any of the features of the properties of the thing that you want to change you won't be able to ch change it or you won't be able to say if it's in desired state yes no um, but this is just demo purposes so obviously there's also these resources that would you would normally program would be different still uh, the the same uh, um, principles apply so cat should return the type that you are defining and again you can just retain a hash table in order to get the properties uh, mapped to the proper uh, uh, proper fields in your class next to that you have your test which return boolean you have your set and uh, I here I commented out just to show you later when we get to the tests uh, how that works um, but we have some helper method as well so basically that's the how, how simple uh, DSC resources are when you auto them with uh, classes okay so let's look into ideas so I uh, probably the thing that you uh, care about the most um, so first thing we learned is uh, inheriting from useful classes I already show you that when we were discussing classes as a general concept but here I actually gonna show you some um, almost ready DSC resource that uses this concept as well uh, so again I'm de deriving from system.net.webclient which makes it possible for me if I want to download files just use the method that exists in .NET directly I don't really have to do all the heavy lifting I will let the system.net.webclient that I'm inheriting from do the heavy lifting for me that doesn't mean that I have to stop there obviously I have to still define get test set with uh, all the appropriate elements and here as you can see I'm also using some helper methods in order to figure out if my test actually succeeded yes no um, so with this simple trick you can actually uh, sometimes save yourself a lot of time on implementing certain things or using um, um, commandlets if you don't feel like it you can just inherit from from existing dotnet class and make it work for you next thing is inheriting from another resource okay so i defined this net file but then i realized okay i would love to be able to use this functionality i already have but on top of that i want to be able to um, have a script that will run if i for example if i uh, define a configuration file I want to be able to do something in order to make this configuration file um, applied to the system so for example if I change the configuration of the service I want to restart the service if I change the configuration of the uh, IS page I want to restart, restart the site or restart the, the pool or what have you all those things probably don't really fit well with the DSC um, or generally uh, tools like that um, rules where you should not change something you are not really defining yourself but because DSC itself doesn't really provide a functionality that would be something like triggers we decided that we don't really want to play by the rules here and we decided okay let's just make sure that we can actually do what we won't have to do so we just defined our set script which basically is called only when something is changed so when the file is being downloaded as you can see here um, I set so I just download the file I get all this magic that I had before up and running and on top of that I will just call the script that is defined in the set script property which allows me to define pretty easily okay this is the source of my uh, configuration file this is where it should land and this is what should happen when this configuration file is downloaded and all I had to do to get that is just define to overwrite or sorry uh, uh, to um, to um, change definition of set including using the set that I got from the parent so as you can see I here I cast my this into parent therefore I get uh, all things from the parent and if I run set here I'll run the same set we had over here next uh, an idea we had was using get in test and set and um, the main reason for that is that get is very often 
ignored or, or, or kind of uh, not used properly, not defined properly in, in many resources that we faced. And we realized that uh, get on itself is not really that useful, but it provides a nice functionality to tell you what the current state of the system is. And if you use prop that properly in your tests and your sets, you can uh, avoid a lot of uh, weird code in your DC resources. It's especially useful here in the class-based resources because get becomes just a method that you can call and uh, it kind of becomes your helper method, so to speak, that allows you to do a lot of things. So here I had defined the getter that will just return something. Uh, sorry, we'll return the, the state of the system as it is now. So as you can see, I uh, get my key property and then getting the first and the second. Again, not really production ready code. And in my test, all I have to do is just, okay, uh, I know that my current is this get, and then I can tell if the state of the system is correct by just comparing this first with current first and this second with current second. If they all are the same, I know that I, my state state of the system is in, as desired. Therefore, uh, the result of the test is true. If not, if either of them is not correct, you will get false. Therefore, you know that set has to be uh, used. And in the set, that gives you flexibility to just change the things that are not as desired. So sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you really in your set you would just uh, throw things away and build them from scratch but it's not always ideal not always um, optimal uh, optimal solution to your problem so if that case is your set would probably best suit it if you just say okay tell me what's wrong and then if I know that my first is wrong I will just uh, change the first I will not change the second if my second is wrong then I will only change the second. If both of them will be wrong, obviously both of those conditions will apply, therefore both first and the second will be set to the value that is desired. And with this we saved ourselves a lot of uh, duplicate code, but also uh, by doing that we make sure that our get is actually implemented properly, because obviously tests and sets are called way more often so any problems that would be in the getter you would see almost right away whereas if you just don't have this this uh, um, kind of um, thing in mind you might have a get getter that doesn't work or is broken or returns some um, really wrong information to the user and that's not something you want to really share with the community or others in your organization um, Last idea that we had was um, just have a base class in our uh, DSC resource module, which allowed us to kind of out outsource or put somewhere else things that were shared in common. So, for example, let's say you are writing authoring the DSC resources for uh, for third party. I will give you an example of Convolt because that's what I was authoring recently. Um, and one of the things we did, we created a module that allows us to, uh, to ma manage the Convolt and uh, the AC resources that were kind of built on top of that, um, they required DSC, uh, re they required Convolt module to be loaded. So instead of having this um, importing of the module uh, spread across all the resources in my uh, DSC resource module, I just defined that in my base class and I made sure, which is kind of important if you want to see a verbose output from me from any uh, DSC run, we import module with verbose uh, colon false, which makes 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 sure that you are not polluting your output from verbose uh, with all the information about all the commandments and functions and and whatnots that exist in the given module, and by putting in this uh, base class. Uh, we made sure that it's consistent across all of different resources that were uh, we were authoring within this uh, DSC resource module. Next to that, we also created some helper methods to allow us easier logging. So we had this this kind of uh, um, boilerplate 
method report issue which takes a message and level and depending on the level it would do different things like write error write a, a event log with the given type and uh, in the verbose case it would just write verbose and and make it information if it was a warning it would write to the warning stream and also write warning to the to the screen and by default it would just write information so um, you you had this choice what you want to do with that and then because we are working with the classes we created another method that basically called this report issue with the whatever you specified so write error would actually call report issue with the error which means that we went that went in that direction with the code and if you had the write verbose method so all those things are pretty easy to define and once you define them in this base class you can then later use them in all the resources that you define within the SC resource module which makes it way more easier to change those behaviors later so if you choose later that instead of writing to the event log uh, you want to write some syslog ev uh, events or you want to write something uh, to the text file because that's what your company policy is suddenly is you can change it pretty easily because all you have to do is just change this boilerplate method and all the resources that kind of uh, the are inher inheriting from this base class will have the same behavior and they will change immediately to this new uh, new new black that you defined yourself which makes it so much easier to maintain the code later so as you can see here i have this uh the real resource this is the inheriting from base module and uh now i can just import the module right away using the method i defined in the base class and if i want to write something to verbose or warning i just basically just have to do that with just this write verbose just write warning and um as you can see those things become free i don't have to worry about implementing them myself uh, other ideas we had is uh, as you probably notice a lot of our code go to helper methods properties we try to make sure that our methods are as simple as possible so get set and tests are not really overcrowded so if we see that something is used across of them uh, we very often will put it in the helper method so we don't have to re re repeat the code uh, we sometimes need also some kind of constants for this uh, for the DSC resource. So for example, let's say you have some DSC resource that will write that information to registry, it will always store it in certain location. You can keep the path to this, uh, the, to this uh, registry location in the um, property of the class, which will not be exposed as DSC property, therefore users will not be able to change it but you will be able to use it across all your methods without uh, making without uh, worrying that it will have wrong value somewhere that you just define variable and you just just change it later and forgot to change it in part of your code um, and we also uh, um, we are trying to use try catch a lot sometimes you need some cleanup code so you have to remember if you even if you throw from your catch or you return from your catch or, or what have you finally we will call it regardless so you can just structure your code properly and make sure that all the cleanups that you need are actually happening okay what problems did we have um, as I mentioned initially oh, this version was kind of a biggie for us and uh, the way we solved that problem was that instead of using the mm, modules that ship with 2012 and above we would just create our own version of those commands and deploy it with the server functions uh, module that we just deploy to all our servers and by doing that we just guaranteed that um, certain things could be retrieved even for we were running it on 2802 so then we would just just uh, go back to sim commandlets or uh, uh, so get some instance for example in order to get this information back um, and the result of that is get obtained adapter which uh, provides information about uh, not only about adapter itself but also the uh, some PNP device uh, location so even for we now down to 2012 we still use this command because uh, PNP shipping with 2016 is not doesn't exist in 2012 for example next problem that we faced was using external DLLs uh, that really result in weird issues when we had to define the um, 
the classes for the, the DSC, DSC classes for the, the those using the the, the the class that existed in those external DLLs. In the end, we decided let's move them off to also uh, another module that we will make sure that exists on the box before we try to use DSC resource. And yeah, if you ask, okay, you have all those modules now, you, you had one problem, now you have two problems. Well, not so much because obviously we use DSC to uh, distribute those modules to all the boxes in our organization. Therefore, you don't have a problem. We actually uh, pretty confident. Con I'm pretty confident that we can solve all those problems pretty easily using modules uh, that we kind of uh, put the code in. And by doing that, we don't have to worry about having our uh, DSC resources too bloated with all the code that is kind of uh, special for this different OS versions or external DLs or what have you. Um, so this is the problems. Now I want to see, uh, show you a little bit about testing DSC resources. Um, I won't surprise anybody if I say that we do that with Pasta. I think there's nobody uh, that these days that do use different tools for that. Um, and we initially had a bit of an issue with testing and we that was one of the reasons we didn't jump on the, uh, the class-based resources wagon uh, early on. But then I had a small chat with Ben Hellens and he uh, showed me his approach to that and we loved it and we used it ever since. Uh, we tweaked it a little bit recently based on some feedback we got, but basically what we do is just we are running using uh, against our DSC resource class, uh, meta, uh, sorry, DSC resource uh, module. And with that, we get the classes inside the pasta script. Now we uh, mock things inside of the uh, this module that we just uh, imported by using the using statement. And next to that, we always do this approach that we just look at the module itself, and then we figure out what these these resources I exported from it, and then we run a switch against it. And the reason for that is simple. We want to make sure that anything that's being added to the EC resource is actually gonna be properly tested. So let's say you added the resource, but you didn't write add tests. Let's say uh, my resource already had tests, so that's fine, but your resource will fall here. And guess what will happen? Your tests will never succeed if you have this. So that makes sure that we actually have all these resources that are added to the DC resources module properly tested. And inside of that, we just create an instance of the, the, our class, as you can see here. It complains right now because it doesn't see this uh, class unknown type. But uh, if I would uh, start with the using, I would get this class inside of this uh, context. And then we name it after the class so it's pretty easy then to figure out if we are running the test against the proper instance. And then what we do is just assign the values and we will run get, check if the get result is proper. So we just verify that the result uh, uh, value is actually what it should be. Um, we would test similar fashion, we would test the tests, test method. So we would just set the values for different properties, run this test, and verify that if something is incorrect in the system, which we do by mocking the commands that we run to see what the system is like, or uh, if the, the value in the, the, the resource itself are incorrect. So we do that very often by changing the values here. So we we'll just do my resource dot foo equals something else that it should be. And then we verify that the response from the test is correct. So that actually it recognizes that something is wrong and will tell us that it is wrong. And finally, we just have to always test sets. That's really no question about it because obviously that will change your system. So you want to be sure that this one is running correct commands and running them only when it has to do that. And what we do here, we actually um, try to mock uh, internal method, uh, helper method, because there is no really easy way, there's no uh, mock minus method name. So instead of doing that, we just uh, run add member when where we force 
the addition of the helper method with different uh, definition that we had than, than the one we had in actual DSE resource and by doing that we can verify later if the method was called and we then say okay uh, it runs the command that we defined in, the, in our set so let's just take a quick look as you can see I'm indeed running a date here so my test is making sure that this 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 is actually being called and um, then I start uh, 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 once I set it I just verify that the get date is being called using assert mock called as we would normally do and uh, we also verify that the, the set method is, uh, in set method the helper method is being called so because we kind of overwritten it with this set content I just verify that the sh file exists and with that I'm sure that my uh, test uh, that my helper method was called so let's just run it very quickly um, invoke faster and it's our testing ps1 so my expectation now it will fail and this is good because if you run tests and they always succeed even for you know that your code is wrong your tests are broken and that's the broken test is the worst thing you can have because it will give you the false sense of security it will give you false idea that you've written good code um, as you can see it has says here that helper method in set was not called and if you paid attention and what, what I said and what I was showing indeed this uh, is the case uh, my helper method was never called um, so there is a problem here because I just imported the classes changing classes doesn't usually result in very clean tests so what we normally do okay I fix that I save it to make sure that it's actually updated and I would normally run it again but the chances are that my test will still fail because the classes that I imported is still the old one it's not that easy to overwrite it with just running using again so what I would have to do is just restart my session so let's just restart that one and then go back to the place where we were so the github ps classes and now again invoke the pastor now that we implement the, the 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 call to the helper method if we run it again hopefully this time around uh, our test will run just fine give it a minute or two or three and there we go testing gets testing test and as you can see set is now happy as well so this is more or less how we test our DC sources this is the unit testing we honestly we don't perform any um, integration tests we would love to but we never have a time to actually properly implement environment that we would be able to run those tests so thus far we focus on the um, on the unit tests but those already proved it's itself uh, valuable because very often you find yourself that the assumptions you made and the code you expected to work just doesn't work because you make it made a typo you forgot about casting you forgot to uh, import something module you didn't verify that you have this module before you imported it all those things make your uh, these resources break and if you are uh, creating unit tests usually you will spot it before it goes into the production environment um, so to summarize um, I would strongly encourage you to try community first and create your own resource when you have to and when you have WMF5 plus I strongly encourage you to go for classes there's reason no reason really no reason to go back to the moth based DSC resources to make your life uh, living hell with all the moth altering making sure that everything in PSM1 matches what you have in the moth and god forbid if you have to change it in the future going through all this process again and again and again and always uh, regretting that you didn't start with the classes in the first, pla first place 
and remember the testing is even more important here than anywhere else because you are actually doing something in the background so there's nobody watching it usually so you want to make sure that especially that things like test and get are running properly and they do what they should and um, and also that they are performant because especially for tests it's super important and if you actually uh, uh, um, implement it with this get in test and set and in mind you will make sure that all the uh, the default methods are implemented correctly so all those tests give you the, the value give you the, the, the uh, confidence and they give you the, the quiet sleep in the, in the night that you don't you shouldn't at least break your systems using your DSC um, the slides and the demos as you probably expect will be uh, provided by the organizers and they will be uh, available on the link below and um, that's it for today i hope to see you next year in person i hope the next year will be uh, the year where we can again uh, meet up have some chats have some beers maybe go somewhere else than the zoo this time around and hope to see you there and hope to, uh, to talk to you in a few days during the interactive sessions uh, organized by our uh, best organizers ever tobias alexander and uh, rob Thank you very much.